Welcome to lecture 2.5, Linear Differential Equations. This is a lecture that I particularly enjoy because it's not something that's actually required in, uh, to know in a differential equations class, but it really helps understanding the material and, and simplification. Um, one complaint that I hear from students taking differential equations is that it seems... Um, a lot of it seems arbitrary. It's like a cookbook of different methods of how to solve different sporadic ODEs with no unifying picture. So in this lecture, I'm going to attempt to give you a peek at the bigger picture. And one of the consequences that you get from this is that you actually understand the structure of these things and their solutions. And it actually gives rise to a few shortcuts that can actually make your life a lot easier down the road. Okay, so let's recall that a first-order differential equation is linear if it can be written in the following form. So something like this. And moreover, a linear equation is homogeneous if this term on the right-hand side is equal to zero. So linear differential equations and their solutions, they actually have a lot of structure. Most, a lot of this we will not get into in this class. It's beyond the scope. But if you understand just a bit of the structure, it really helps demystify these objects. So instead of being a cookbook class of how to solve using different equations with different methods, um, it reveals their simplicity. So we will see two big ideas in this lecture, and these things will reappear when we study second order differential equations. And these two big ideas, these are not something that I've seen in books summarized in this way, it's, but it's something that after teaching the course about five times, I realized were common themes, and I sort of came up with on my own as, um, as, as ideas that I wanted to pass along to my students. So along the way, we will uncover a neat shortcut for solving ODEs, um, well, first order, but also later second order. Um, and this shortcut is, is usually not covered in a, in a differential equations course. So big idea number one is suppose a homogeneous differential equations has two solutions, or y1 and y2. Then any function like this, so we call this a linear combination of y1 and y2, is a solution. If you're an engineer or a physicist, you might look at this and think superposition, and that's exactly what it is. So if y1 and y2 are s solutions, then 6 times y1 plus 18 times y2 is also a solution. And that, that actually is, I think of it as superposition if you're just adding these. Okay, so let's, let's prove this, no, not formally, but let's give an idea as to why this is true. So... Um, or let's, the word proof is often intimidating, so I'm just going to say, call this like a verification. So how do, you, how do you check that this is true? Well, just do it. Take this equation and plug this back into our differential equation and check that it works. So I'll do that for you. So plug, plug our formula, or not formula, plug our, we call this expression, I guess, our proposed solution back into our homogeneous equation, a of t, y equals zero. And, you know, I should say that I think in, in previous lectures, I, I wrote this with a minus sign. It doesn't matter if this is plus or minus. Um, you can make this a minus, and that's just going to change a by a plus or minus sign. So I'm going to leave it like this. This is a perfectly good uh, definition of a homogeneous ODE. So I'm going to plug this equation back into here. Let's do that. So, so this is my... So let's, let's call this, this y. So if this is y, then y prime is C1 Y1 plus C2 Y2. So let's plug in that back in. We get um, 
C1 Y1 plus C2 or prime Y2 prime plus A of T times Y, which is C1 Y1 plus C2 Y2. And I claim, so when I claim this is a solution, that's the same thing as saying this thing equals zero. So notice this is equal to y, this is equal to y prime, and this is equal to y, and for that to solve, that means that y prime plus a times y has to be equal to zero. So let's verify that. Um, so I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to group like terms together. I'm going to rewrite this as c1 y1 prime plus a of t times what's c1 y1. I'm going to put the I'm going to put the y ones together, and I'm going to put the y twos together. Plus c2 y2 prime plus a of t c2 y2, and is that equal to zero? Maybe you see it. Well, let's factor out the C1 and C2. So C1 times Y1 prime plus A of T Y1. Let's factor out the C2. C2 times Y2 prime plus A of T Y2. And is that equal to zero? Indeed it is because that is equal to, why is that equal to zero? Because y1 solves that equation. So remember, when I say y1 solves that equation, that means that y1 prime plus a of t, y1 equals zero, and also y2 prime plus a of t, y2 equals zero. So this is also equal to zero. So, of course, this is equal to zero because it's just C1 times zero plus C2 times zero. And so, yes, that checks out. Okay, so big idea number one was about solutions to homogeneous linear equations. You can think of it as superposition. Now, big idea number two is about solutions to inhomogeneous differential equations. Okay, so let's see what it says. Suppose we have a first order inhomogeneous linear equation, something like this. It doesn't matter if you call this, um, you know, put a plus or minus here. Um, and let's suppose that we know some solution to this. Maybe we can, frequently we can see one by inspection. Like, maybe there's a constant solution, something that's really simple. So let's call that solution yp of t. It's any particular solution. And now let's suppose we also know the solution to the much simpler homogeneous equation. Call it yh of t. This is, this is going to be a family of solutions. It's going to have a constant of integration in there. Um, and this is something we can solve using separation of variables. So if we have those two pieces of information then we automatically have the solution, the general solution to the original differential equation. Just add those things together. No need to do variation of parameters or integrating factor or compute that often tricky integral that sometimes involves integration by parts. No, we, we have the solution right in front of us. Okay, so, so let's recall that this, you can often separate variables. And let's, let's recall how. Um, dy dt, so plus, or say this is equal to minus a of t times y. Maybe I should have used a plus. Oh well. Now in this case, um, we have dy over y equals negative a of t dt. So you can integrate both sides. Um, and we get natural log 
of y equals, um, let's call this like this. And then I'll, I'll let you go from here. You exponentiate both sides. And you get that. Uh, how do I want to write this? Um, yeah, let's do this. Then you get that yh. Well, now I'm calling this yh is c e to the minus a of t. And one reason, something I didn't think of before, but why, remember I said don't memorize these formulas for like integrating factor? Well, one reason is because it's not necessarily consistent as to whether we put a plus or minus here. So if you had, if I had given you this formula a few lectures ago, there would have been a minus there and there would be a plus there and you would have been off by a sign. So learn the method, it's, it's much easier. Okay, so um, why is this true? Let's, let's verify this. So, okay. Um, how do I want to start? So, if, if, let's take the general solution. So, if y is the, the general solution, Why is the general solution? So this is going to have a constant of integration in somehow. And yp is any, any particular solution. Then, then what do we know? Well, both of these things, both y and yp, are going to solve our equation. That means that y plus a of t, sorry, y prime plus a of t y equals f of t. And it also means that y p prime plus a of t times y p equals f of t. So Let's, well, let's subtract these. So if we subtract these things, we get that y, let's see. So we get y prime minus y p prime plus a of t times y minus y p equals zero. And now we can, of course, arrange this to be y minus yp prime plus a of t times y minus yp, and that equals zero. What does this mean? I, in other words, this thing right here solves the homogeneous equation. Look what this equation is. This is the derivative of this function plus a times this function equals zero. That solves that equation. I.e. Y, ah, y minus yp solves the homogeneous equation. Um, so in other words, thus y of t minus y p of t, so our general solution minus any old solution that we come up with is going to be something that solves the, the, the homogeneous equation, or equivalently y of t equals yh of t plus yp of t. So maybe one or two of you may be looking at this and saying, well, you didn't actually prove this because you didn't show that any solution to the homogeneous equation is of this form. There might be more. 
and good point. But that's a minor detail that I, I don't want to dwell on because this is not a proof-based math course. But if, if that is a nagging doubt, I encourage you to check it out on your own and to verify that yourself. But this is indeed what I want you to take away from this slide is, is big idea number two. Um, and I'm going to say this throughout the course. You want to solve it? Homogeneous plus particular solution. Okay, so let's do some application. Let's talk about some applications of this, of these big ideas. And I think the main one is it's a, it's a really nice shortcut for solving um, differential equations. And actually, in most classes, this shortcut does not even arise until you get to second order equations, when it's really the only method that we have available. But it's often overlooked that. This shortcut works for first order equations. So if you don't like integrating things like separation of variables, you'll love this. So applications, um, the first thing, solving for the homogeneous equation is, is usually easy. Just separate variables. That's, you know, you should agree that that's easier than the integrating factor method. Um, what else? Sometimes it's really easy to find some particular solution by inspection. A lot of equations we've seen have had one special solution that's like a constant or maybe a linear function, something that's, we, you, you will learn how to spot these things quicker. And when this happens, we automatically have the general solution. And that's super nice. So, so example, please. This is an equation that you should be familiar with by now. Um, think of T as the temperature of a cup of coffee in a 72 degree room. So let's, you know, so before we, we solved this using separation of variables, which isn't really that hard itself, but let's solve this even quicker. So the, so the homogeneous equation is, um, so well, this thing I'm going to write as K, I should say as 72K minus KT. So the homogeneous equation just means you get rid of the term that doesn't have a, a t in it. So that's t prime equals negative kt. And I'm, I'm going to call this th because it technically is a different function than the t in the original equation. So we know right away that this is exponential decay. So this is c e to the minus k t. OK, so that's our homogeneous solution. Let's find any particular solution. So find, and here's the key word, any particular solution. Well, so what's your favorite solution to this? How about the constant solution of 72? t p p is is 72. And this, this clearly works. So that clearly works. That's our equilibrium solution. You should be able to see that by inspection. So the general solution is, looks like this, is the homogeneous solution plus the particular solution which is c e to the minus k t plus 72. And that is exactly what we got before, but, you know, this is easier. We didn't even need to integrate anything. We just, we knew this from experience by inspection, and we knew this by inspection, so we can put them together and then solve. And um, just, a, just a comment um, if so this this equation is autonomous remember what that means that means that there is no that t prime does not depend on time so there's no lowercase t over here and anytime you have an autonomous solution you can um, you can search for a constant solution by setting the derivative equal to zero and solving for solving for in this case big t now, maybe there's no solution, but if there is one, that's how you find it. So recall, um, if, if an ODE is autonomous, a tono, I think it's spelled like this, 
autonomous, then set y prime equal to zero to find a constant solution and and use use this for y p of t. And again, you can't always solve this. There won't always be a constant solution. But if there is one, set y prime equal to 0 and solve. And in this case, you don't need to use integrating factor. OK, so let's revisit our favorite differential equation, y prime equals 2y plus t. This is our running example. We have solved it using integrating factor method and using variation of parameters. Both of these involve a nasty, not nasty, but just an unpleasant integral um, and it, well, you need to do integration by parts. So I'm going to show you a shortcut. And ironically, not ironically, just for whatever reason, this is usually not taught in a differential equations course. Okay, but it works, and I encourage you to use it. So using our shortcut, solve the homogeneous equation first, which is y prime equals... 2y, well let's put h's here, because it's technically a different equation. Well, we know how to solve this. This is just exponential growth. This is c e to the 2t. So now all we need to do is somehow come, cook up with, you know, cook up some function that solves this equation. If we can do that, then we have our final solution, no integral needed. Okay, so um, what do we want to do? So how to, let me ask you a question, how to guess a particular solution y, p of t? Now you don't need to guess the general solution, you just need to find some simple solution that works. Le so let me give you an answer. It may not be obvious where I got that from right away, but let's do it, verify it works, and then let's reason through why that was a good guess and how to come up with good guesses in the future. So let's, let's guess that there is a, a solution y p of t is a times t plus b. So this is like mx plus b, just a, a linear equation, a line. Well, if there is a solution, so, he, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to guess a solution. This is going to be a theme throughout the class. Guess a solution, plug it back in, and solve for these unknown parameters. So how do you plug it back in? Well, you've got to take the derivative. What's the derivative of this? y prime is just a, right? So let's plug, plug back into y prime equals 2y plus t. Um, well, let's... I'm going to write it like this. Um, so we're assuming there's a solution of this form. If there is, this thing must be satisfied. In other words, um, that means that a, that's y prime, or yp prime, must be equal to 2 times a t plus b, that's yp, plus t. And then, now we have, so, if we can solve, if we can find for some a and b that makes this equation hold, then we're done. We are done. So how do we find some a and b that, that work? Well, so here's what I, I've said before that I, and I like writing these equations in, in their so-called normal form, so that's y prime minus 2y equals t. Maybe I should have done this from the start. Um, well, let's... I guess that's not necessary, but... Um, actually, you know, in fact, that's, yeah, that's not necessary at all. Um, so, if you want to write it like this, you can, but you don't have to. But I'm just going to ask you how to solve this. So, well... The left and the right-hand side of this um, are lines. So the left-hand side, I'm going to write this as 
zero t plus a, I didn't do anything, right? And the right-hand side, I'm going to collect turns. I'm going to write this as some number of t's plus something else. So how many t's do we have? We have 2a plus 1. And, how, and what else do we have left over? And we have 2b. So this is a line, and that is a line. If they are the same line, then the coefficients of t better be the same, and the y-intercept better be the same. So in other words, we have a system of equations. 0 equals 2a plus 1. So we have to set that equal to that, and we have to set that equal to that. And we have a equals 2b. So let's see. So you solve this and you get, um, actually, I, I remember what the solution of this is before, but well, no, I don't. Um, so a equals, let's see if I can do this. Yeah, so a equals negative 1 half and b equals negative one-fourth. I think that's right. Let's check. E is a equals 2b? Yep, and 2a plus 1 is indeed equal to 0. Okay, so what this means is that we have found our solution. Remember, we guessed that there is a solution of this form. So that means that there is a solution of the form negative one half t plus b, or which is minus one quarter. So here is our particular solution. And our general solution, so that means our general solution is just the sum of our particular solution plus our homogeneous solution. So in other words, um, yh plus yp, which is c e to the 2t minus 1 half t minus 1 quarter. That is our final solution, and you may recall that is exactly what we got when we did it the longer way of integrating factor or variation of parameters. So before we had to solve this nasty integral, here... I get, all we have to do is a system of equations. Okay, so let's go over a few things. Let's try to make this a little simpler. Um, first of all, where the heck did I get this, this guess from? So um, we're going to do this more when we study second-order equations, but um, I think a w way to explain it is first take your equation and write it in standard form like this. And ask yourself, what is this thing on the right-hand side? That thing, that's t. That is a first, or um, first or no, what do I want to say? Um, no, let's not say first. Let's let's say degree. This is a degree one polynomial. So if I have a degree one polynomial on the right hand side, what happens when I take the derivative of a degree one polynomial? Um, well, actually, before I answer that, that is going to be my guess. So when I have a degree, one poly so when I have a thing on the right-hand side, I generally want to guess that I have a particular solution of, that, of the same form of that thing. And why does that work? Well, suppose you have a degree one polynomial. So do this with me in your head. Not the details, just a general idea. Plug this guy back into the left-hand side. So, you know, Take the derivative, put it here, and take two of these and put it here. And I claim what you get is still a degree one polynomial, right? Of course it is. So when you plug this back in, you get a degree one polynomial. It's, it's a minus this thing. And you can set that equal to this thing, also a degree one polynomial. And 
solve for A and B, and that will tell us which particular degree one polynomial is going to work. And so to do that, I, I set like coefficients equal. I had 0t plus a is this times t plus this. Okay, so you, you probably have a few questions, and you're not going to get this solid until you do a few yourself, but let's do another example. So let's solve this equation using our, our shortcut. Uh, the first thing I want to do is write this as in our uh, write this in our standard form, and we don't have to, but it just makes things easier. Trust me on that. Okay, so now um, the homogeneous equation this is y p prime minus two y p equals zero, right? Right away, we can see by inspection that y prime, not y prime, y p, is c e to the two t. And so next, we need to find a particular solution. So we are going to guess there. There's a solution of of the form y p of t. Now, what should we do here? Well, let's take a clue from the last uh, problem. And what is this thing on the right-hand side? That is an exponential function with coefficient 3, k equals 3. So let's assume that there is a solution of the form a e to the 3t. And before we plug it back in, before we verify this, let's think about why this might work. So we don't know what A is. We're going to try to figure out what A works. But let's take this, this thing and plug it in to the left-hand side. And what do we get qualitatively? Well, the derivative, that, that's also of this form, an exponent, some, it's some number of e to the 3 t's. And negative 2y is also some number of e to the 3 t's. So if we collect terms, if we plug this into the left-hand side, collect terms, we're going to get some number of e to the 3 t's. And so for the right value of a, we can make that number equal to, to 1. This is just 1 times e to the 3 t. Okay, so let's, let's do that. If you didn't follow that, that that's fine. But, um, okay, so, so let's, let's plug this back in. Before we can do that, we need to take the derivative y um, y p prime um, is three a e to the three t, right? So let's let's plug back in. So we plug back in. So we get y p prime minus two y p equals um, e to the three t. Well, so plug this back in, we get 3a e the 3t minus 2 times, oh no, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to do that. That 3 doesn't, um, oh yeah it is. Um, it's right the first time, yes. 3a to the 3t minus 2 times yp, that's a e to the 3t. So this is my y prime, this is my y, and let's set that equal to e to the 3t. So the, what is the left-hand side? So the left-hand side is going to be some number of e to the 3t, and the right-hand side is going to be 1 times e to the 3t. So what is that sum number? How many of these guys do we have? Well, actually in this case, we looks like we got a way easy. We have 3a minus 2a, so we have a, and that means that a equals 1. In other words, yes, 
there is a solution of this form as long as a equals 1. So that means that our particular solution is of the is e to the 3t. Well, I just made this problem up and I didn't check it. Maybe I should have done something more interesting where a was not equal to 1, but I think this is fine. So our general solution is y of t is is what is the homogeneous plus the particular solution and that is equal to c e to the 2t plus e to the 3t and notice again this is much easier than you know integrate integrating factor or variation of parameters Let's finish this lecture with what I think is a very interesting observation. It's in no way required, but I think it really helps um, helps you see the big picture once again. And this is not something I've seen in a book. This is something that I've sort of discovered just by teaching this class for, by the fourth or fifth time. I, would, I sort of saw some patterns, and I realized that those patterns are actually worthwhile to, to note. Okay, so let's, let's recall vector calculus or multivariable calculus. Um, so the following, if I have a fixed vector v in n-dimensional space, n could be 2, or n could be 100, or anything else, then taking all scalar multiples of v is a line through the origin. So I'm going to call that L. And I'm going to say, and so L is not a variable. L is just, I guess, L is 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 L, L is a line. It's sh short for the equation. So, uh, so this 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 is a line through the origin. And so, it, you know, in, in 2D, of course, this is just y equals m x. But the beautiful thing about this is that this works in any number of dimensions. Okay, so let's let's draw a picture of this, and I can. I'm only going to do 2D. Um, although the same thing works in three. Maybe I'll if I have space, I'll do 3D. So let's let's fix a vector v. Oh, I can. I'm going to make it red because I have colors. So th this is v. Then c times v is is this. Well, that's supposed to be a straight line. So c times v is this line through the origin. And let me ask you a question now. And this is called a parameter, this is a parameterization of this line. It's not m y equals mx, or mx plus b is a is the, is the standard form, but this is a parameterization. And c is the parameter. So my question is how, how do we parameterize a line not through the origin. So in other words, let's take a parallel line to this and what's the equation for that? Well, the answer, so I'm going to just take this vector, let's call this w, and let's add that vector to every single point on our original line. And notice that this line, so this line is now c v plus w. So the answer is add w to it. And now what's w? Now I picked this this vector here that's horizontal, but I didn't need to do that. I, I could have picked w to be, if I wanted to, I could have picked, let's pick a different color. Um, so 
So I, I could have picked I could have picked that to be W and shifted my if I had done that these are, if if this is say W prime then my equation can also be parameterized as C V plus W prime. So the moral here is that W so where W is here's the key any particular um, vector on on a line L. Okay, so what's the point of this? Well, um, so all solutions to a linear ODE we know have the following form y of t equals c times the homogeneous solution plus the particular now let me let me point out that Previously, up until now, I've, I've assumed that C was built into the homogeneous solution, and I'm still going to do that. But So just to emphasize, um, so I, I don't really need this C here, but, but I'm putting here just to emphasize that there is a constant of integration in here. This is a family of solutions, whereas this one is not. So as we've seen, this is big idea number two. All solutions to a linear ODE have the, are of the following form. This is the general solution. Whereas all, all um, I'm going to say solutions or all points to a linear equation, or I, I, I should probably say, yeah, yeah, let me, let me yeah, I'm going to say all points. Um, on a line, you can is L has the following form C times V plus W, and here C is is some any real number. So solutions to a linear differential equation C times the homogeneous plus particular or C times something plus any particular solution. All points on a line, C times V plus any particular vector on the line. That is not a coincidence. There's definitely a structure. Um, th this is one, one reason why these things are called linear ODEs is because the solutions actually truly are linear um, vector spaces or affine spaces, something you probably haven't learned, um, and that's fine. We will see more about this later when we solve second order ODEs. We will revisit our big ideas one and two. They will arise, they will be very predictable, very much analogous to, to, uh, well, to these big ideas, and we will have a similar connection between solutions of second order differential equations and solution and not lines from vector calculus but planes from vector calculus and again i should say the same thing works in in three dimensions if if this is a let's suppose we want to parameterize this line in r3 call that l well we let's start with the vector v Let's find all, let's find the line through V, that's C times V. Let's take any particular W that lies on our line L. And then L is going to be of the form CV plus W. 